Happy Odin's Day. Today I want to talk about another visit to Cauldron Longbarrow. This time with Maidstone's Pagans. <laughs> So at the weekend, I had some ambitions, some plans that I didn't achieve. Um, waking up Saturday morning, I was scrolling through the phone uh, on various social medias. And curiously, for once... Um, not finding out about an event three days after it had happened, uh, as can be the curse of Facebook, I saw that that day uh, Pagans of Maidstone were going to Cauldron Longbarrow to practice. Um, and I don't know. While I've been a member of their group on Facebook for a little while, I just felt compelled to make the effort and to go along. There's something about that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to digest for myself, become quite tied to Cauldron and you know knowing that there was another group going there it just felt right to go along I don't what I want to say is I'm not saying that I was going along to you know make sure they were behaving themselves which now that I've met them I'm not sure they're necessarily the kind of people that like to behave themselves. But it doesn't mean that they don't act with respect and are genuine people. When I say they might not always behave themselves, I mean that in a playful way, which I'll get into. Um, yeah, so I, I made the decision to go along. And, um, you know, made a couple of little uh, decisions that I'd take something with me uh, for an offering and something that I wanted to take with me just because it felt right, which I will go into because um, it's kind of like a side subject but relates to the ritual they were doing, uh, the period of winter nights, the, you know, thinning of the veil, connection to ancestors. And that was the thing, really. So, to go off on a tangent, the thing I decided to take with me was something I picked up just over a month ago from Knock Cuts in Maidstone. And... There's a bit of backstory to this item I got, or why I felt compelled to get this item, because it was a replacement for something. So, going back into the mists of time when I was a wee lad, um, my nan used to tell us her grandchildren, and she probably did this with her children, I don't know, I mean, it's about elves and fairies, you know. There's still stories we might say about my nan that, you know, she was an old witch or she knew things that other people might not understand. Elves. And this is a thing that's becoming, you know, it's becoming clearer I suppose so as a child we was told that 
There would always be an elf in the corner of the room watching you if you were behaving. And his name was Abadi Oo. So, trying to think about this logically, this there was this Christmas tree decoration my nan had of Abadi Oo. And it's possibly a was a tree decoration from the 60s, definitely the 70s. Um, and it's something that we ended up with in our house when I was a child growing up. And eventually I inherited it. Though its condition was pretty shoddy, shall we say. It was old, you know. I mean, I had it up until the early 2000s. And it's something that meant a lot to me. And for reasons I won't go into another side conversation to a side conversation, I lost it. No, it's something that was, at the heart of the matter, my fault. You no, know, I lost Abadiu at a time that I probably lost myself. Um, so, it cutting back to recent times, we were in knock cuts in Maidstone, and they'd got a lot of their Christmas stuff out on display and everything. And I saw these elves that looked remarkably similar to Abadiu. Not the same, obviously. And times have changed and stuff. And I got one. I had to. My wife didn't ask too many questions about it, which was probably good at the time because it it kind of got me in here a little bit. And, you know, getting this replacement Abadiu, he's been sat in the front room, not really doing much. So, going back to last weekend, I took an offering, and I also took Abadiu with me. It felt like the right thing to do. You know, you got to... At certain times, you have to trust your your instincts, what your gut's telling you to do, for whatever reason. Um, so, I go on my own. My wife got home from work, and she was being a lot more productive than I was in terms of, we've got some trading events coming up, and... She's been working like a trooper, whereas I haven't. Shame on me. Um, but on the other hand, I'm doing different kind of work. You know, I'm going to socialise with people I'd never met before. Um, generating thrift, all right? <laughs> so she's doesn't want to go this time. It's not that... I, I'm... I'm kind of the icebreaker, I suppose. And I didn't speak to any other of our Heathens of Kent group, mainly because it was short notice, and you know they may have had plans, and it's just like, I'll do this by myself. So the time comes, I get there, meet up with uh, these guys, welcomed openly. We walk down to the long barrow and uh, you know, the, the ritual takes place. I want to say uh, the lead ritualist she did a fantastic job because she clearly had a sore throat and she soldiered through valiantly um, which for someone performing a ritual as I understand it for the first time is Stress enough 
to have a sore throat and to be, you know, at times str struggling to talk. Um, you know, she was heroic. You know, it, it's it takes a lot of guts and a lot of effort to, to you know, perform a ritual. Not just amongst friends, but when you've got other people turning up that, you know, you've never met before. Um, you know, it's a big ask, and she was fantastic. There was one thing during the ritual which I in particularly really liked and wasn't expecting, and there was a meditation, and it was something that got me here because you know following on really from when we stayed overnight at Coldrum the relationship I've been developing with Coldrum is an ongoing thing and there was a brief experience then when we stayed overnight and this now has continued And I saw my nan, which was powerful, you know. It was her as I remember her, sort of, before she went into hospital, before she passed away. So she was her elderly self, except the one thing that was different was she could see okay and it was seeing her looking at me looking at her and that was great you know, it was she's been on my mind a little bit lately so it was really good and then you know, meditation finished and stuff was said and blah usual pagan stuff at a pagan site and uh, the decision was made to socialize at the pub nearby which you know was following on from some deep and meaningful stuff a really pleasant time you know the the gang, let's call them. Um, very welcoming. I really had a great time. The, <laughs> it didn't. There were some colourful conversations, and when I got home, and on the way home, I was like, "Really?" There's been conversation in the past me and my wife have had where it seems like when we go to parties, we always seem to be the guys that end up on the naughty table. Not that we're doing anything wrong; it's just we're the ones that are quite happy to enjoy ourselves, whereas some other people might be and restricted by. Stiff upper lips. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, the guys I spent time with at the pub, it was definitely felt like we were sitting on the naughty table. There was some, there was still some deep and meaningful conversations, but there's some that I will not repeat here. Quite happily talk about uh, um, with with my wife and with other people, and have a laugh about in the future when you know and next meet up with these guys and maybe take uh heathens of kent with us if they want to go um in general it was a great day I, um and, and then sort of i drove home took over to you with me and he's now sort of taken his place on um, my little set up with the gods and uh, some other little bits that really mean a lot to me in our front room. I 
feel like I should say more. I don't really have anything else more to say, and it was just a really great day out. So thank you to the pagans of Maidstone. You know who you are. Um, and to Heapens of Kent. And to just, you know, good times. It's like winter nights is an ongoing thing. There might be a time for, you know, particular ritual and obviously times are different now to the times of our ancestors the lesson I've, I feel like I'm learning is my nan seems to have primed the way for a understanding elves and this year you know in particular, seeing her was connecting to this year and Abadiu. You know, it's just sort of a part of seeking understanding with the mysterious elves, which leans into. Um, what male ancestor spirits are, while well, this year are female ancestor spirits, and just exploring that, you know, unexplainable power, the mystery and the deep connection to the bones of the earth and the breath of the sky. Additionally, side note, I did take some photos. The farmer's fields looked fantastic. It was like a autumnal rainbow in the looking at the the farmer's field. It was these different shades of brown and orange and green that I said really felt like a autumnal rainbow in the earth. And you know, once again, I took photos. But I'm not a photographer, you know, it's, and I realised as well, as a last form, I was talking about this yesterday to my friend, um, I really missed this last year, and I feel like I'm, I'm just a little bit sharper to noticing it, on accounts of missing it last year, sort of being stuck indoors, unable to do anything. And perhaps just, you know, breathing that air, being outside, just, you know, it's sharpened the senses a little to seeing those things, having missed them. Anyway, enough waffling. If you've listened, thank you very much. I'll see you all again very soon. Do take care. Enjoy winter nights. <laughs>